Hi everyone, welcome to another exciting episode of Eras, Epics, and History. I'm your host, John Fisher, and uh, I would love to tell you a bit about my day, but we've got to dive right in because we don't have a lot of time. Again, very busy day. Um, apologies for the late video, but um, I am here, I am making a video today, and uh, we're just gonna dive right in. So. We left off yesterday with the end of the Easter Rebellion of 1916. We see 16 leaders executed, and those executions, along with the destruction of Dublin city center by the British, helps to unite support around republicanism and um, calls for nationalism, creating a, a, an independent Ireland from Great Britain. Now, um, a lot around 1917 a year later we're seeing a lot of political activity going on especially with Sinn Féin which is still one of excuse me I need to scratch my nose <laughs> um he Sinn Féin if you don't know this is one of the major political parties in Ireland today and basically uh it started as a movement in 1905 it was started by a man named Arthur Griffith a Dublin born um publisher who uh, did not trust the Irish MPs in Westminster. He felt Ireland needed to bring change th on its own. And to do that, he envisioned Ireland setting up its own parliament, replacing English institutions with Irish institutions. And so he sets up this movement in 1905, Sinn Féin, which is Irish for just us. Up until the summer of 1917, it is basically just a, a loosely organized collection of local clubs. But um, what ends up uniting them that summer is a man named, or who ends up uniting them, uh, these various factions together in the summer of 1917, is Eamon de Valera, who was actually born in America to an Irish mother and a Spanish father. And at two years old, he sent over to Ireland for his, apparently for his own protection, I don't know, what he was in danger of but anyway he grows up in ireland and he basically proposes a um a solution that'll help unite uh the republicans and the non-republicans because ireland he says has now achieved some form of international recognition from america and europe and various foreign powers it should be allowed to form its own parliament through popular referendum with the Irish voting. Now, Republicans and non-Republicans, they come, they, they like this idea. So he proposes this. And in 1917, uh, Sinn Féin, because of this proposal, because he unites these differing interests, these different factions of people, in 1917, Sinn Féin wins uh, by elections on the through abstentionist votes. And it's in the fall, it's in October of 1917 that we see um, Eamon de Valera take over as president of Sinn Féin from Arthur Griffith. And a month later, in November of 1917, he becomes leader of the Irish Volunteers. Now, the British, they end up angering the Irish even more because in early 1918, they introduced conscription. They're forcing, they're trying to force people to enlist in the British army. And they actually send a man, uh, Field Marshal Lord French, to enforce conscription. And he ends up, um, he ends up overseeing this event on May 17th, where that night, uh, he and his men end up arresting um, all the leaders of Sinn Féin. And this actually includes de Valera, and who, by the way, de Valera was one of the leaders of the Irish Republican Brotherhood. He escaped execution because he was born in America, and the British did not want to uh, anger the Americans by killing one of their own. The other well-known leader who escaped was the Countess, Countess Markiewicz, uh, because she was a woman. And she's a, an Irish feminist and was the first female MP to serve in Irish Parliament. Uh, so basically, uh, what ends up happening 
in is De Valera is arrested along with Arthur Griffith. Um, Michael Collins, who is a well-known figure in Ireland, he escapes. He is, he evades arrest along with another uh, Cahal Bruga. Now, um, Michael Collins was actually the aide de, de camp for Joseph Plunkett, who was one of the leaders executed following the rebellion. And Michael Collins rises up through the ranks of Sinn Féin to become the direct director of organ and as well as through the Irish Volunteers. He becomes the director of organizations for the Irish Volunteers. Anyway, um, so he evades arrest. And this, um, the, these series of arrests really just really bring support for Irish nationalism all the, the way to the highest point. Because November of 1918, we see World War I end and a general election occurs next month in December of 1918. And Sinn Féin ends up taking 73 seats while the Unionists get 26 and the Irish, uh, and the Irish party gets six. And then around 19, early 1919, 19, January of 1919, uh, all of those elected MPs are supposed to meet in Westminster to take their seats as a form of protest against the British government and a way of saying, we are not a uh, part of your country none of the members of Sinn Féin actually go there to take their seats. They instead meet in Dublin and they start what's called, and they start the first Irish assembly, the Dali Aaron, it's called. That's what I Ireland's assembly is called. So they start that. And um, not all of them are there. In fact, only 27 of them are there because 34 were in jail and one was deported. Who this was and where he was deported, I don't know. Now, in early 1919, uh, Eamon de Valera actually escapes uh, jail in Lincoln. That's where he was in England. He escapes jail in Lincoln and returns to Ireland. And he is actually made president of the Dali Aaron. And he appoints these um, these ministers who make it who become well accepted in Ireland as the as the Irish government. And uh, the first Dolly Aaron session takes place on January 21st. And you have Cahal Bruga acting as provisional president. And it lasts for two hours, the session. Most of it's in Irish. And there they introduce a uh, provisional constitution, a declaration of independence from Great Britain, uh, a, um, a message to the free nations of the world. And they end up also introducing um, uh, a socioeconomic policy known as the democratic program. And it's here that we really start to see the first um, true emergence of Irish politics outside of Great Britain in over since, since it was in over centuries, arguably, or or over a century, if you want to look at it from the point of view of when Ireland became part of Great Britain through the Act of the Union officially. And basically, um, they end up taking a lot of, um, they actually take a lot of lessons from the British in terms of uh, they they form their government based on the parliamentary procedures of Great Britain as well as civil service because that's all they know. In addition, um, they end up uh, ratifying the um, Declaration of the Irish Republic, which was officially proclaimed in 1916. And so they end up doing that, and they also appoint representatives to go to the post-war um, world conference. And uh, let me just check and make sure that's correct. Uh, the uh, post-war peace conference, sorry, the post-war peace conference, which is taking place in Paris, and they hope there they can gain recognition from other European powers. Um, and 
in addition, the establishment of the Dolly Aaron, uh, this first session, they established the present 26 state counties uh, that make up Ireland. So uh, we see a lot going on here. And we're going to get more into this a little bit about um, how the government continued to prevail against, um, against Britain tomorrow in our video, which is going to be all about the Irish War for Independence. And uh, yeah, we'll talk about it then. But until then, um, yeah, have a good night.